Hey y'all, so today I want to do a series discussion for a series that has been one of my favorites for quite a while, but isn't talked about too much on booktube. And that series is the Pendragon series, which you see right here in all my videos right next to the Harry Potter books. The reason that I wanted to do a discussion on the Pendragon series is because it's not talked about very much on YouTube, and it's not even a very well-known series in real life or even just on booktube. I have seen a handful of booktubers who have read and enjoyed it, but overall not many people know about it or talk about it. So I actually first read these books when I was in junior high. Um, as I started reading them, I think the first seven were already out, and the eighth one came out just as I was finishing the seventh book. And then I got books nine and ten as they were released. So the Pendragon series has been among my favorites for almost as long as Harry Potter has. So the Pendragon series is a 10 book fantasy series that starts out middle grade and ends up being more of a YA series near the end. The series follows our main character Bobby Pendragon as he traverses the many territories of Hala and it also follows his two best friends back home on Earth. The series is a little bit hard to explain so give me a little bit to try to put it into words. So the easiest way for me to explain the series to you is actually to talk about the premise of the first book. So at the beginning of The Merchant of Death, 14 year old Bobby Pendragon is a pretty popular guy and he's the star of his basketball team at his junior high school. Right before the championship game, the girl that he's had a crush on for forever comes over to his house, admits that she likes him, and kisses him. And then his uncle bursts into his house and tells him that he has to come with him and that some people need help. And that's all really the information that Bobby gets. Through a series of events that I'm not going to explain right now because it would take too long to explain, Bobby finds himself in this place that he's never seen before called Dinderon. What Bobby learns is that he is a traveler, which means that he can go to alternate dimensions, which are called territories in the series, and that he has found himself on the territory of Dinderon. Basically, each territory has its turning point. The point in time where the territory will either continue to thrive and become a better place or where it will fall into chaos. There's this guy named Saint Dane who is a traveler run amok who is basically trying to turn all the territories into chaos so that he can kind of swoop into each one and become the ruler of that territory. And because his uncle Press is lead traveler, Bobby has to be right there with him as lead traveler. Now that sounds really confusing, but it's actually really late, well laid out in the series, and it's a lot easier to understand than I just explained it. Because I'm trying to explain it with no spoilers, and so that I don't like basically explain the entire premise of the first book, so that you can like get a good idea of what the series is about without knowing the entire plot of the first book. This series also has a dual narration. So part of what Bobby has to do is to write a journal chronicling everything that happens to him while he's on these territories and send it to a trusted person on his home territory. And that person is his best friend Mark. Very early on in this book, Mark also ropes in Courtney, who is Bobby's crush that I mentioned earlier in this video, and the two of them begin to read Bobby's journals that he sends back. So there's actually a dual narration between Bobby's journals and then the stuff that happens with Mark and Courtney. Also, our Earth is actually second Earth. There are other Earths in this series, which is really cool. So one of the best aspects of this series is the immense world building that DJ McHale does every single time that we experience a new territory. Every single territory is just so well fleshed out and so interesting and possibly the most fun part of the series is getting to learn about all these different territories. So I'm not going to tell you what they are even though some of them are really cool and I really wish that I could tell you what they are and what their unique qualities are. Another of my favorite aspects about the series are the really awesome characters that DJ McHale has created. Some of my absolute favorite characters are the travelers that Bobby meets each time he goes to a new territory. In fact, my absolute favorite character of the series is actually one of the first travelers he meets, and her name is Lore, and she's just so cool. <sighs> Lore's my favorite. And like I said, this series kind of starts out as a middle grade series, but by the end, it has definitely progressed into a full-blown young adult series. So we get to see Bobby 
in the first book when he's 14 all the way through the last book when he's like 19 or 20 and it's just a really really awesome character arc and I just I love it so much. So now I'm just gonna run through the books in order, tell you what they are, and give you my rating for each one. So book number one, which I already showed you, is The Merchant of Death, and I think I gave this one 8 out of 10 stars. I liked it, but it's definitely not my favorite in the series. Book number two is The Lost City of Far, which actually takes place on my favorite of all of the territories. I gave this one 8.5 stars out of 10 because even though I absolutely love the setting, the plot isn't my favorite Pendragon plot. And I also really love The Traveler from this territory. One of my faves. Book three is The Never War, and I gave this one 7.5 out of 10 stars. This one's definitely not my favorite in the series. I'm not as big of a fan of the setting or of the plot as I am of some of the other books. Book four is The Reality Bug, which takes place on another of my favorite territories. I ended up giving this one nine out of 10 stars. Book five is Blackwater, which I gave nine out of 10 stars. This has one of my favorite Pendragon plots, but it's set on one of my least favorite worlds. Book number six is The Rivers of Zadah, which is actually my least favorite book in the series, and it takes place on the territory that I personally find the least interesting. However, it does have my favorite character in it a lot. Um, but I ended up giving it 7.5 stars out of 10 because, like I said, the plot and the setting weren't my absolute favorite. Book number seven is The Quillen Games, which is one of my favorites in the series, and it also takes place on one of my favorite territories, and I gave this one 9 out of 10 stars. Book number eight is The Pilgrims of Rain, which is actually my favorite book in the series. I gave it 9.5 stars out of 10. However, it is my least favorite cover of the series. DJ McHale kind of hates this cover too, and he calls it Bobby the Blue-Eyed Reindeer, which I actually think is really funny because he looks like a reindeer with the trees sticking out. And um, Bobby has always had brown eyes, so they kind of messed his eyes up on this one. But oh well, it's still my personal favorite book of the series. Also, can we just look at these two covers and please explain to me how this is the same person? Up until this book, they did a really good job ke keeping Bobby's appearance consistent on all of the book covers. And then this one came along. Like, that doesn't even look like the same guy. Look at those. It's not the same dude. Okay, back on topic. Book number nine is Raven Rise, which I actually really didn't like the first time through. But, however, on reread, I actually ended up liking it, and I gave it 8.5 stars out of 10. And finally, book 10 is The Soldiers of Hala, which is my second favorite book in the series. I gave this one 9.5 stars out of 10. This is another one that I actually really didn't like the first time I read it. It was actually my least favorite in the series. But again, after rereading all of the books, I really, really enjoyed this one. This was just really epic and really awesome. I don't really know what else I could tell you about the series um, without giving any spoilers or talking about specific territories or specific books, but I just want to emphasize how much I just love this series. It's just, it's so great. I know that I didn't give any of the books a full 10 out of 10 stars, however, this series is so, so, so good. It's just... I can't even put it into words. If I were to choose my favorite series after Harry Potter, there's a pretty good chance that it would be Pendragon. I mean, I love the Mortal Instruments series and I love the Infernal Devices and those would definitely be in competition for my favorite after Harry Potter. But the Pendragon series would be right up there. Like I've already said, I just can't say enough good things about the series and if you like fantasy at all, I would recommend this series to you because it's just... I love it. It's great. If you have any more questions for me about the series in general or maybe more specifics, I'm not going to tell you spoilers, but if you do want to know more about the series and you have any questions about what I've said, let me know down in the comments. I would gladly answer them except spoilers. I will not tell you what happens in them because I want you to read them. I will leave a link to my blog and to my Goodreads down in the description. Please add me as a friend on Goodreads. I'd love to be friends with all of you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I love it. I really love it. I don't want to break my bookshelf, but I really love it. The series is beautiful. It's just beautiful.